All right, Shahal fam, welcome back. We're just walking down the hill right now to uh, get down here along the Indian River. And uh, you can probably tell because I got the waders on, we're gonna be doing some wade fishing today. And uh, meeting up with my buddy Dylan, he's down there about uh, like 100 yards. And uh, when we were walking down the hill, it looks like he caught and released about a 25 to 27 inch snook, which is cool because this is his second time here. I uh, brought him here uh, about a month and a half ago for his first time and it, the bite was not good. We had like two or three bites and lost every fish. And uh, uh, the first time he was on his way from the Keys back to New Jersey. Now he's on his way from New Jersey down to the Keys. And uh, he just wanted to do a little pit stop and uh, catch some fish. And uh, he got here at first light. I was supposed to meet him, but I'm an extremely heavy sleeper and I only set one alarm and I slept right through my alarm, like an hour through it. Like it, the, the ringtone was just like playing in my dream as like a melody. Uh, so uh, I, I actually thought it was soothing. I probably should change my uh, alarm sound. But uh, anyway, uh, let's start fishing. I'm gonna start with a little top water, see if we can have some fun. And then we're just gonna switch plugs until we uh, figure out the bite. So uh, let's catch them. Yo, what's up? How big was that snook you caught? Uh, like 20 inches probably. Oh, really? It looks bigger from far away. Yeah. But what's going on? Hey, did you get him on the popper? I had him on a uh, spook. Oh, on a spook? Nice. Yeah, so I'm going to keep throwing him. It'll probably work for another uh, hour or so. Dude, I, yeah, right here was really good. I saw him popping off all the way from back there, so I chased him over here, and I got hit three times, and then the fourth time he hit Oh, nice. There were a couple in there, too, because I walked back to, because he got wrapped around the oyster bed. I spooked like two of them out. Oh, nice. They were stacked. Yeah, they were sweet. Cool. Well, let's hit it. Well, let's uh, try this dock to start, and then we'll hit the next, like, ten or a dozen, and then we'll go the other way. What I like about this water being a little murky today is uh, these fish probably won't be as spooky or finicky. And I'll fish my bait all the way back to in front of me because these fish can't see you, you can't see them. And I've had them multiple times hit it like right at your feet in these kind of conditions. Nothing at this first dock, not even a swirl. So strange, it looks so good. And usually that dock has quite a few fish on it, but maybe they just didn't want to eat the top water. I'm gonna keep throwing it though, because I think if we do get a good bite on it, it's gonna be a bigger fish. Also, by the way, Dylan has a channel. If you want to check it out, I'll link it down in the description below. All right, unfortunately nothing on the top water. So I just put on a four inch Fishaholic Finback Shad and uh, I decided to put the white and silver flake with the chartreuse tail on because of the uh, murky discolored water. And unfortunately I forgot uh, scissors and pliers today. And you know, uh, Dylan's way over there, he has his pliers so I'm gonna have to get them soon to, to snip off the tag end but uh, I'm gonna just try taking a couple casts until, you know, right here until we do. I know this dock is uh, pretty good right on the end. I've caught uh, quite a few snook out there, especially when the water's high like this, I've caught them stacked up under that boat. And being that this water is dirty, it shouldn't really matter about the tag end.
there's one. Nice snook. Crushed. The fishaholic shad. Oh, it's a fatty too. Not long, but real thick and round. Look at that. Sweet. Super pumped we got this bite without trimming the tag end. That's a nice one right there. There he is. Nice chunky snook on the four inch fish all like fin back. Look at that. It's a pretty one, right? That's beautiful, dude. I love this bait. And the snook love this color. Like you wouldn't think it would work, but it works amazing in dirty water. Whew. Dude, I thought it was like a 40 from back there. I saw it jump all like, oh my God. Yeah, I thought it was bigger too. And you know what's crazy is uh, like, you know, I forgot my pliers and my snips, right? So I just casted it with the tag gun and he still oh, ate it. <laughs> but um, can I borrow your pliers? Cause I need yeah. to uh, retie now. He, he sliced up this uh, 40 pound leader. <laughs> a little bit. There you go. And I'll give you another color you can try. I'm gonna try this color too, awesome. just a backup. There you go. You just, you just take that one with the shad already on it. Awesome. Now you got three shads. Um, yeah, I would try the chartreuse uh, with the white body and silver flake, and then you know if you're not getting any bites, maybe switch to the other color. All right, we're back in action. Put on a fresh 40 pound Lita. Clip the tag end this time, and uh, I'm gonna keep working the end of this dock because if there was one like that here. There's a good chance there could be another. Oh, I think I swear I just got whacked as soon as I was letting this sink to the bottom. But it was something small. Oh, look at that, see? Got whacked again. Oh my God, big red fish. He was sitting right in there. That was epic, dude. Oh, would have loved to have caught that fish. All right, well, that was so cool. Uh, and the bite has been pretty dismal since I caught that first snook. Uh, we just hit about like four or five other docks without a touch, but uh, we just pulled up on this dock and Dylan went out deep. I came shallow and uh, I don't know if that red fish followed the bait and then saw me and then spooked or just spooked out of this dock, but that was just so cool. <laughs> and uh, if there's one here, there's probably more in this area. So we were gonna start heading south after this dock because it looks so juicy with all this structure. Like there's concrete pilings underneath these wood pilings. But uh, I think we gotta hit like another three or four uh, docks north and then we'll head south. So let's keep at it, see if we can uh, find some other fish. Come on, fish, come on. There's a fish. Nice. Found another one. Super shallow. Kind of learning a little something from seeing that red. Super shallow. Whoa, <laughs> a 
love it when they do that. So wild. There we go. Snook number two. That is a pretty one. All right, well, we're uh, gonna switch things up and start uh, heading south. How many bites did you have, or uh, did you have any? It was pretty slow, right? Pretty slow. <laughs> pretty slow. Uh, and uh, luckily I got a couple. Dylan got his like right off the bat. Sometimes that could be a curse when you're, you catch one right away. Curse is real. Yeah, like he got his first snook today, like as soon as he started fishing. And uh, other than that, then I saw the redfish and uh, we're gonna walk, uh, I guess now about like a mile and a half south because uh, it's gonna be about a half mile probably to get to where we started. And then I wanna walk uh, about a mile south further uh, so that uh, we can fish north again along this big stretch of docks that I think will be more productive. And being that it's uh, a hard south, southwest wind, it'll be easier fishing north than fishing um, to the south with the wind blowing in our face. So uh, I'm putting Dylan through some intense cardio. And uh, if you've ever been on a, a Montauk surf fishing guide, guided trip with me, <laughs> you know that uh, I'm not afraid to walk miles and miles and miles and miles to uh, get on some fish. And that's what we're gonna do. So stay tuned. I'm excited to uh, see what lies under the docks in uh, the next area we go. I'll see you there. All right, well, we made it. It's about 30 minutes later and uh, we're gonna fish this dock first and probably the next 20 docks back. And this tide has dropped out significantly. So uh, before we hop in the water, I'm just gonna snip this off. We also went back to our trucks to grab a snack and I grabbed my pliers and my snippers here. And I want to put on just this little Savage Gear shrimp for working the shallows out into deeper water. And then we might put the shad back on to uh, probe the depths on the ends of the docks. Nice. Dylan with a snook on. Um, Got the tripod. There he goes. All right. Well, we are skunking it out of the park with uh, the Savage Gear shrimp. So. I'm gonna switch back to the shad because that's what was working. But I just thought this shrimp in the shallow water would have worked a lot better. But uh, the main forage right now in this area is mullet. So maybe they just don't want this bait. And uh, it is gonna storm hard any minute now, probably. Woo! Let's catch 
one more fish. Come on. I think this dock here is going to have a big one on it. Come on, come on, one more. Oh, that's the cast. That is the cast. Come on, fish. Come on. Oh, here it comes. Here comes the rain. <sighs> At least I got the dock to hide under. Oh yeah, this is it right here, 30 plus incher, come on. insane all right and five minutes later it uh has passed so it looks like uh we can keep fishing our way back i mean we're still like a half a mile away from the truck so might as well make the most of it I'm taking off the fishaholic fin back. And I'm gonna just put on this little trout eyes jig head. And I'm gonna pair it with just a little bass assassin. Like one of these guys. And the reason I'm doing this is because uh, I did notice after the storm, the water did cl actually cleaned up a little bit. It's, it's not as murky as it was earlier when uh, it was really windy. Like the water was much more churned up. And that's why I feel like the Fishaholic Shad worked better because it was really bright and had, uh, you know, has a lot of action, a lot of vibration in the water. This is a much smaller, more subtle presentation that I think works better when the water is uh, clearer and calmer. That should be good, let's get them. That's the cast. Come on fish, come on. Come on. Nope. Oh my gosh, what is going on right there? Look at that. Big fish chasing a mullet. There he is. Woo! The one last snook that I was looking for. Not a 
giant, but super fun on the light tackle. <laughs> and uh, just realized that or sitting in the water. Benefits of having a van stall. All right, well, how about that? We got one more snook and uh, it was a really tough bite today. And uh, we had to fight through the little bit of weather that we had, which was crazy. But uh, I'm still happy that we came out here and uh, made it happen. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, we'll have to come back uh, next time and see if we can uh, get on some redfish because it was super cool to see uh, that one red just spook right at our feet. And uh, Dylan actually had a redfish that followed his uh, little bass assassin in. And uh, that's uh, kind of cool to see because if, if you saw and I saw one, there's probably more that we just didn't see. And uh, we also saw a big mystery fish as we were walking yeah. here that was sitting in like four inches of water and we took a cast that and just spooked and uh, I didn't really get a, a good shot of it with the camera. But uh, anyway, this camera is about to die. I'm on like 1%. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, be, sh be sure to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, check out Dylan's channel. Again, I'll put the link down in the description. And uh, he caught his first snook today, so that's pretty cool. He caught your first two. So yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's always something to be proud about. And hey, it's better than nothing. Um, and uh, yeah, until the next video, live to fish, fish to live.